In the wake of this, it changed everything. The rate that it all happened was just phenomenal. I think it's really got the world watching because um, it's playing out almost like natural history in front of our eyes. It's simply just not interaction between two top predators here. What we've got is a whole cascading wake of impacts. L'histoire commence au milieu des années 2010. Plus précisément, aux alentours de la baie Fols, à quelques dizaines de kilomètres du Cap. À l'époque, cette zone est un paradis pour les requins, qui s'y nourrissent notamment de céréoles et d'otaria fourrure. Il règne ici en maître, et cette zone présente donc l'une des plus fortes concentrations de grands requins blancs et de requins planés au monde. In a nutshell, the, the sharks, particularly these two species, the apex sharks, keep the whole ecosystem in check from the top down. Their function is to keep the numbers of Cape fur seals in balance. Um, and not only the Cape fur seals are prey to them here, there's a lot of other different prey species as well. This area of South Africa was really known as a, a global hotspot for great white sharks. And subsequently, industries were built specifically around their presence. So the cage diving ecotourism industry, the filming industry, um, and this was This was really the go-to place on the planet in terms of seeing great white sharks. Mais en février 2017, l'équilibre de cet écosystème vacille. À Gansbaï, une femelle requin blanc est retrouvée échouée, manifestement après une fuite désespérée vers le rivage. Plus inquiétant encore, ses congénères disparaissent des alentours pendant plus de trois semaines. En mai 2017, nouvelle découverte. Kalizi, une femelle requin blanc mesurant 5 mètres et dont la domination sur ses semblables en avait fait un sujet d'études scientifiques et à son tour retrouvé morte, le ventre ouvert, le foie manquant. Et la série ne fait que commencer. Trois nouveaux grands requins blancs, similairement mutilés, sont découverts jusqu'à fin juin 2017. La théorie du braconnage est évoquée par les autorités. Mais les biologistes marins finissent par avancer une autre théorie, en reliant ce mystère à un autre. Dès 2016, des plongeurs signalent que les requins planés se raréfient à Castle Rocks, une zone protégée où l'on peut d'ordinaire les observer par dizaines. En avril de cette année, le docteur Allison Koch avait pu autopsier un cadavre au foie manquant et présentant des traces de dents d'orques. Killer whales, and really white sharks only other rival in the in the marine ecosystem, were not typically common in this area. Even though they were seen occasionally, typically it would, would be the type of killer whales that hunt for for dolphins, and so common dolphins in particular. And certainly what wasn't common is to see Uh, shark eating killer whales in this region. Les conséquences de cette prédation qui pousse les requins à fuir sont spectaculaires. Entre 2010 et 2016, dans la baie Falls, la présence de grands requins blancs était signalée en moyenne 250 fois dans l'année. En 2019, ce chiffre tombe à zéro. Les coupables semblent tout désigner. En janvier 2015, de premiers témoignages signalent la présence de deux orques mâles dans la baie. L'un, dont la nageoire dorsale s'affaisse à gauche, est appelé Babor, l'autre, dont la nageoire s'affaisse à droite, est appelé Tribor. Identifié pour la première fois en 2009 au large de la Namibie, le duo, probablement des frères, semble avoir voyagé à travers une zone s'étendant sur environ 1400 km. En 2019, Alison Koch publie une étude intitulée « Quand le chasseur devient la proie », dans laquelle elle désigne formellement Babor et Tribor comme les responsables des attaques, en faisant correspondre géographiquement la découverte des cadavres et leur signalement dans la baie. Chasseurs aussi redoutables qu'intelligents, les orques se nourrissent d'un large panel de proies et se distinguent par leurs techniques de chasse variées et souvent couronnées de succès. Des attaques ciblées contre les requins et visant leur foie représentent cependant un comportement inédit en Afrique du Sud. Mais pas dans le reste du monde. Il existe trois écotypes d'orques. Les résidentes, qui vivent près des côtes et se nourrissent majoritairement de poissons comme les saumons. Les nomades, qui préfèrent les mammifères marins comme les dauphins ou les phoques. Et enfin, les plus méconnus, les orques de haute mer, identifiés en 1988 en Amérique du Nord. The offshore ecotype typically is, is a shark forager um, and eats many different other species of fish. Um, and even though there were a few specimens of offshore orcas documented in South Africa, there was a paper by uh, the late Professor Peter Best in 2014. Um, the theory was that these animals were rare in South Africa and that they were actually more of more offshore, given the name. They were, they were found in the pelagic regions as opposed to the coast. However, when Port and Starboard came in in 2015, 
they very much have the the characteristics of these offshore orcas and the fact that they're hunting shark also backs this theory up. En mai 2022, dans une baie plus à l'est appelée Baie Mossel, cette chasse spécialisée est filmée pour la première fois, à la fois par drone et par un pilote d'hélicoptère. And what was really fascinating about that piece of um, evidence was it wasn't actually just port and starboard. It was only starboard, but with um, five other individual orcas. So um, this showed us for the very first time how the killer whales extract the lovers from the sharks, but also um, that it's not just the two doing this, it's others have learned the behavior. So it really was mind blowing to, uh, to see that, but it was also great for the science to have that concrete evidence in place uh, and allow us to understand a little bit better these hunting strategies. It's almost like watching a pack of wolves hunt, it's incredible. Uh, so the, the shark will circle very tightly, uh, as, as will the killer whale, um, in order to obviously protect its liver. The, the very nutrient rich part of, of, of the shark that the, the, the orcas want to extract. And um, we, we even documented from this cell phone footage, starboard, one of the killer whales, one of the pair, the male pair, uh, coming up to the surface and, and, and feeding on shark liver. And, and as the researchers leading this work, we were, of course, um, absolutely fascinated to see how it happens. But of, of course, worried at the same time, it is concerning because, of course, Sharks worldwide don't need any more threats and pressures, and now these killer whales are, are displacing white sharks in South Africa. There are there are vast consequences associated with this. En effet, suite à cette seule chasse n'ayant duré qu'une heure, les grands requins blancs fuient la zone pendant sept semaines. Les scientifiques se demandent donc ce qui va se passer pour l'écosystème maintenant que la chaîne alimentaire se trouve bouleversée. So for example, where I'm based in Hans Bay, we have the Dyer Island ecosystem. Um, it's home to many different, um, very critically endangered species of seabird, including the African penguin. And their numbers are already in, in, in jeopardy, actually. And now we don't have white sharks around to keep Cape fur seal numbers in check. So the African penguin as a species now has to compete with increased seals in this region um, for resources. Offshore killer whales aren't really supposed to be coastal in South Africa. As far as we know, they never were or else we wouldn't have had 20 years of very stable white shark numbers. Now, lo and behold, 2023, we, we struggle to find a white shark in the Western Cape of South Africa. That's just, you know, it shows how prominent this interaction has been and this, this behavioral uh, cascade is how quickly it's happened. Um, and, and the reason it's concerning is because Quite likely, I mean, of course, the science still needs to substantiate this, but quite likely these killer whales have been moved away from their, their primary prey reserves offshore, um, which would, would have been pelagic shark species. Has this been caused by fishery pressure? Quite likely. Has it been caused by climate change? Could it be both? Le 24 février dernier, une nouvelle chasse de babor et tribor a pu être suivie. 19 carcasses de requins planés ont par la suite été retrouvées échouées en l'espace de 24 heures. You know, you can understand why white sharks um, site abandon and displace is that they are not going to survive this. So they very quickly need to show plasticity in their, their foraging behavior and find, find safer grounds. And, and that's absolutely what I'm hoping they've done. Um, one day maybe we'll discover another location before the killer whales do that, um, uh, that they, they found some kind of refuge in. But sadly, I think coastal for them, um, these killer whales are just too smart. However, one has to keep perspective that that amount of sharks that were killed by two killer whales is a lot, yes, but compare that to a commercial fishery that fishes day after day for these species of sharks, it's not even one day's fishing. One of the things about this is it's very visual to the, the populations here. We're seeing directly. But if we were to also go on to fisheries vessels and observe and count how many sharks they take out each time, it would, it would probably bring a bit more perspective back there. 